All right, what's going on? Welcome back to The Commodity. I'm Fez, and today we are taking a look at 15 reasons why New Zealand is the best country in the world. Uh, I do watch a uh, YouTube channel called uh, Your New Zealand Family or something like that. I don't remember. I love them. It's a family of four, a boy, a girl, and uh, you know the parents. Uh, it's really entertaining. I love seeing kind of the reaction from the kids, really. I think it's kind of funny, them learning a lot and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of what made me want to do it with my son. Uh, and we're going to do more, of course. But um, guys, thank y'all so much for the love. I think we just hit a little over 89,900 subscribers. I think I'm at 910 subscribers. Um, so we're getting close to 90,000. So Guys, if you are enjoying these videos and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That would mean the world to me. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at why this channel. Uh, what channel is this? That's the uh, Geography Bible and why they think that New Zealand is the best country in the world. So let's jump in. I personally don't think I've ever heard a bad word spoken about New Zealand. Neither have I. Sometimes regarded as being one of the most beautiful countries in the world, this isolated nation is a very desirable place to visit, live and retire. I was lucky enough to travel there in 2020, but then something called COVID-19 decided to pop up and ruin all of my plans. So in this video, we've got 15 reasons why we think New Zealand is the best country in the world. Because my name is Sam, and you're watching The Geography Bible. Alright, so let's kick off this video with number 15. It's natural beauty. New Zealand is undoubtedly one of the most beautiful picturesque countries Whoa. in the world. That is amazing. Like you literally have a huge mountain or the ocean. I wonder how comfortable it is to walk on this because it doesn't look like, you know, sand, sand. But man, that is amazing. This looks like a golf course. Like seriously, I'm curious of how much a round of golf cost on the course like this. My guess, you're right there by the lake, or the lake, the ocean. Um, you're next to a river. You have beautiful views behind you. I'm guessing, let's see, something like this for us would probably be $120, $150 a round. Unless it's like an exclusive course and it's part of like a, a uh, that is a court. Yeah, you can see the pin. Uh, unless it's like a, uh, you know, it's um, a private course where you have to be a member of the club then you're probably looking at probably two grand a month but i'm guessing 150 bucks let me know if you know down in the comments i'm curious because that would be an amazing course to play at i would love to play there in the world from mount cook to milford sound to hobbiton new zealand is a very mountainous rugged country so it offers some of the most stunning oh. picturesque views you will see on earth with it being a relatively narrow island you are also never too far away from the ocean number 14 it's climate new zealand has a largely temperate climate while the far north has subtropical weather during summer inland alpine areas of the south island can be as cold as minus 10 degrees celsius in winter most of the country lies close to the coast which means mild temperatures moderate rainfall and abundant sunshine pretty much the perfect climate not too hot but not too cold apart from earthquakes and the odd cyclone new zealand does not experience much life-threatening extreme weather number 13 it's low population and density at just 5.1 million new zealand is a very small country what's more around a third of new zealand lives in its biggest city Auckland. To put this in perspective, there are about 75 cities in the world that are more populated than the entirety of New Zealand. New Zealand has a population density of around 18 people per kilometre squared, making it one of the least densely populated wow. countries in the world. This low population and density means less congestion, less traffic and a general chilled vibe. Which of course isn't everyone's cup of tea, as some people do prefer the hustle and bustle of big cities. Number 12. 
You know, it's always that mix. And I feel like Auckland could probably give you what you need as far as like um, if you live, you know, suburbs a little bit far away, uh, further away, like 30, 45 minutes from city center or even the edge of the city. Like that would be probably perfect for a lot of people. Um, You kind of get like your space, but then you're not far enough from town to kind of enjoy life when you want that nightlife and all that kind of stuff. So, and that's basically where I live now. I live probably about 30 minutes east of Dallas. So if I really want the nightlife, I can just drive to Dallas and be there in 30 minutes. So, It's history and culture. Even though New Zealand is a relatively new country in terms of the year that it was discovered, it is packed full of history. Older New Zealanders USA. take huge pride in their culture and the Maori people, along with their traditions, are well respected. Hey, Maori were the first to arrive in New Zealand, journeying in canoes from Hawaii about 1,000 years ago. A Dutchman, Abel Tasman, was the first European to sight the country, but it was the British who made New Zealand part of their empire. You'll find amazing Maori historic sites across New Zealand, as well as beautiful colonial era buildings dotted throughout the country. Number 11, Hobbiton and Lord of the Rings. Regardless if you are a Lord of the Rings fan or not, the Hobbit set and the surrounding rolling hills are absolutely stunning. It was one of my childhood dreams to visit Hobbiton, and finally in 2020, I got to visit, and I wasn't disappointed. It was the most beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky and 20 degrees Celsius weather. The movie set is New Zealand's third largest tourist attraction, attracting approximately 17% of international visitors. And as could you imagine not like that's an insane amount from just a single movie or series of movies, but I don't think the whole movies were filmed there or were they? I don't know. Um, unfortunately I'm not a fan because they're just too long, too much. I get bored. There's very big loopholes in it that are messed up. Um, the whole thing could be done in like 20 minutes from the beginning of the first movie to the end of the last movie, they just, you know, ignored a lot of stuff. So it's not really my favorite. It's not my cup of tea. I had a girlfriend that loved this stuff, but not for me. I would still want to see the the area. You know, I, I think it would be fantastic to see where it was filmed. It's beautiful. Estimated to bring in around $78 million to the area annually. Take wow. this with a pinch of salt, but I was told during my tour that the director of Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson, receives 50% of all of the revenue, meaning he earns a cool $39 million or so every year. Wait, Number he t- makes money from the revenue that's brought into the area? There's no way. That seems impossible to, <clears throat> to figure out. Unless it's revenue from the movie. I don't understand that statement. 10. It's isolation. New Zealand's isolation from the west of the world does have economic drawbacks. For example, when I was there, I noticed the price of some groceries is astronomical compared to... Let's see here. So, yeah, that's pretty... Uh, I wish I knew what that was. Uh, that's probably about $1.80, I guess. Or no, a dollar. Well, I don't know what your... Uh, what New Zealand to... USD is, but I know the pound is, I want to say it's, we might be pretty close actually, because we pay about a dollar, I pay like a dollar 60 for a half gallon. Okay. So this is one liter. So yeah, y'all are way more expensive than we are. Loaf of fresh white bread. So y'all pay $3. Oh my gosh. Rice, oh my gosh. And I'm sure it's even worse right now with everything that's going on. 20 pack of cigarette marbles. Holy crap. That is so much money. I mean, to be fair, I don't smoke, but... And ours is expensive. Ours is like $8 a pack. And I think that's insane. Imported beer, yeah, of course you're going to pay a lot more. That's about what we are. Domestic beer, what it that's is way in the UK more than what we and are. Europe. 
Quite simply, if New Zealand does not grow a certain produce, it may have to import it from a place that is tens of thousands of kilometres away. Its isolation, wow. however, does work <clears throat> in its favour politically. Apart from Australia, who is like its older big brother, New Zealand doesn't really have... How far is this to here? Like, can, is it there a ferry that takes you across or do you have to like actually chart an airplane to get from one side to the other? Any neighbors and any neighbors it does have like Fiji are not world superpowers. Compare this to the likes of India who have the nuclear superpowers of Russia, China and Pakistan on their doorstep. Number nine, it's beaches. When you think of New Zealand, you usually think of huge picturesque mountain ranges and rolling green hills. But what most people don't realise is that New Zealand has some of the world's most pristine and beautiful beaches. I can imagine. New Zealand is actually home to 90 Mile Beach. However, the name is actually completely wrong. It's actually only 55 miles. Still, an incredible distance. Right. With New Zealand being such a small country population wise, you'll often find completely deserted beaches that you can have all to yourself. Number eight, most livable cities. In 2021, two of the top 10 most livable cities on earth. Let's see what's all on there. So we got Auckland, Osaka, Adelaide, Wellington, Tokyo, Perth, Zurich, Geneva, I'd love to live in either one of these. Melbourne, Brisbane. We're in New Zealand. Wellington, which came in fourth place, and Auckland, which ranked as the most livable city on earth. To be a country of this size and feature two of your cities in the top 10 is an almighty achievement. Being a livable city, pretty much- The reason I want to try those areas is I've always wanted to date a girl that was six foot tall. I don't know why, but I really do. And that's like, Five inches tall, almost half a foot taller than me. It means that it is a nice place to live. Low crime, clean environment, and job opportunities are usually the main factors to contribute to a livable city. It must be noted, however, that when the 2021 rankings were released, New Zealand at the time was one of the only countries to pretty much stomp out COVID-19, meaning its citizens lived a mostly lockdown free life. Now, of course, since then, things have changed. Number seven, low corruption. New Zealand is one of the least corrupt nations on earth. In fact, it- Look at that. Wow, you can see the little hills here and there. The trees are sparse. The green is on another level. Wow, that is beautiful. Now I will say if you were using this as traditional farmland, you would have to level out a lot. You can tell this is very leveled out right here because your tractor running over this would not go well trying to like, you know, harvest unless you're doing it by hand. And even then that would be a pain, but beautiful. What is this land used for? Like, let's see here. We got, is that a round pin? So horses maybe? I'm sure, I'm guessing livestock. Like this would be perfect for livestock. But look at this, we got, are these hedges? This thing's insane, there's no way that's real. It usually battles Denmark and other Nordic countries for the top rankings in the world. In 2021, New Zealand ranked as the equal least corrupt country in the world, alongside Finland and Denmark. As mentioned earlier, New Zealand doesn't really have any enemies, and because it isn't a nuclear power, has a relatively small economy and population, it rarely finds itself getting involved with foreign affairs. Number six a relatively small country that offers everything. Although New Zealand is rather remote and small, it offers a wide variety of activities that its residents and tourists love. From gorgeous beaches and surfing, to skiing, whale watching, mountain climbing, and wine tasting. As mentioned I'd earlier, have have this boat, country period. offers a range of different climates and landscapes. So you don't actually ever have to leave the country as most things are already on your doorstep. Number five, Queenstown. Often described as the adventure capital of the world, not only does it offer activities for thrill seekers such as skiing, bungee jumping and skydiving, it is also one of the coolest and most beautiful looking cities in the world. Wow. Queenstown sits on the shore of Lake Wakatipu among yeah, dramatic Wakatipu, alpine cool ranges. Name. 
a popular holiday and backpacking. So is that a dinghy that actually has a light? I don't think most dinghies around here have actual lights. However, even though it's a lake, we would still put a, uh, probably some lighthouses on the, these, uh, peninsulas just to, just in case, you know, kind of thing spot for any time of the year. Queenstown is renowned for its four distinctive seasons. Winter brings crisp blue sky days with snow perfect for skiing. Spring retains the snow but blooms into longer warmer days. Summer offers sunshine and long twilights and autumn a burst of brilliant red, orange and gold. Number four, its social purpose. New Zealand ranks third in the world when it comes to social purpose. Now, what exactly is social purpose? Well, it's the country's attitude and actions towards a variety of social attributes, mm. such as animal rights, human rights, the environment, commitments to climate change, gender and racial equality, and many more. For this very reason, nice. New Zealand is a very progressive, healthy place to live. Now, of course, this doesn't mean it's perfect, but ranking third in the world means it is one of the best countries in the world for its social purpose performance. Number three, it's road trips. New Zealand is a country built for epic road trips. I can personally vouch for this. You need a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or something like that, or even a motorcycle for this. It wouldn't be a great road trip, but it'd be fun. As I did a road trip through the country in 2020. Unfortunately, a global pandemic decided to pop up which ended up ruining most of my plans. Low amount of traffic outside the major cities, alongside some of the most breathtaking views you will ever see, results in an absolutely stunning road trip adventure. Being an isolated country with low population means there is less light pollution too, so the night sky makes things even more epic. To drive from the North Island to the South Island, you must take a three hour ferry from ah. the capital Wellington across to Picton. Which a three is hour pricey, ferry, is that what he said? Admittedly, low population more epic. To drive from the North Island to the South Island, you must take a three hour ferry from the capital Wellington wow. across to Picton, which is a I hope that's a fine, a fun ride. I mean, looking at this, can you fit? Do they have a place for your cars? A little pricey, but admitted. Hundred. What? Is this the only way to get across? That is so expensive. Plus a small camper van. Because how many people are actually traveling back and forth on a consistent, uh, consistently, I guess is what I'm looking to say. That seems a bit excessive. If, if you're asking me, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking like $100. It is extremely <coughs> fun. You can sip on a glass of wine as you float past the incredible fjords. Number two, it's chilled, laid back vibe. It's isolation, low levels of corruption and crime, low population and density, oh, alongside yeah, a society farms, that is cattle. friendly, open-minded and welcoming, means that New Zealand is an extremely safe, chilled place to live, work and study. If you're looking for a busy city or country with a booming economy and that hustle and bustle vibe, then New Zealand probably isn't your best bet. You might be better off living in a big city in Australia. Look at the lack of traffic at this point. I'm sure, you know, come time for everybody to go home from work, it gets busy and packed. But like, I mean, shoot. Zero time in Dallas is like this, unless it's like two, no? Like, yeah, no, it's never like this. Yeah. And finally, number one, the best country to survive a global collapse. New Zealand is that. often voted as being one of, if not the best country in the world to survive a global collapse in society. Its rapid response to the pandemic and ability to completely seal itself off from the rest of the world has reassured its citizens that if a society was to collapse, let's say an even deadlier pandemic or a nuclear holocaust, then New Zealand would be a safe place to be. Again, with its isolation and political stability, there are very few countries that pose 
pose a threat to New Zealand. If a nuclear war was to break Lesser out, being a there dick. is a very slim chance that New Zealand would be targeted. Its mountainous, rugged terrain alongside being an island would also pretty much make a land invasion impossible to win. Now, of course, New Zealand isn't perfect. It does have many issues of its own. For one, the country is tucked away in the corner of the world. It's a country that does require some planning to visit, and flights aren't cheap there. Round trips from the US or Europe are almost always over a thousand dollars and the journey takes over 23 hours wow. and even when you arrive the country itself is far from being budget friendly it is one of the most expensive countries in the world to travel and live in so what are your thoughts Probably on a New lot Zealand? like Hawaii Would you live there let us know in the comments as always thank you for watching subscribe if you haven't already it is completely free and you can always unsubscribe at any time thanks again for watching and we will see yeah it sounds like Hawaii because because it's so expensive they don't have a whole lot of uh natural resources so they import almost everything i know a pack of cigarettes back when they were like two to three dollars in the u.s they were like 15 dollars in hawaii uh and now i could only imagine they're probably like 20 dollars in hawaii um but this is beautiful i knew it was going to be positive because this thing i mean Every time I've looked at New Zealand, I've always thought, you know, this would be a great place to retire. I wonder what the regulations are for retirement in New Zealand. Like if they are very restrictive or was it that was like that? I want to say it was Australia is very restrictive. It's very hard to uh, live in Australia if you're not from Australia. So um, let me know down in the comments how what, what kind of regulations they have or if anybody could just uh, move in with a visa or something like that. Uh, but guys, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If you did hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification. I do have a members. Uh, you can be a member of the channel. It's not a lot of incentives. It's just supporting me. Um, so if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to, if you don't want to, don't do it. Uh, but until next time, bye.